Welcome to Divine Downloads. I'm your host, Cassandra Bodzak, and in this episode, I'm interviewing astrologer Deborah Silverman on the most impactful planets in your birth chart. So I am so excited to have Deborah Silverman here. I have to share with you guys, I have followed Deborah on YouTube for a few years now, and I found her through these adorable, funny videos that she does. They're like these little snippets. Um, and she did this one series again, this was like a few years ago, it was like dating different signs. And you're just not only you're so talented with obviously the astrology, but you have such a great like way of embodying the personality of all of these different signs. When I saw Pisces, I was like, I never felt more seen. <laughs> they have 8 million views. They're just, if you go to YouTube, you guys, and just put in YouTube, Deborah Silverman and your sign, like Pisces would be for Cassandra, a five minute video will come up and it'll have between two to 500,000 hits for just that video. And that's how you know you're in the spot that you're not the only one that liked them. Absolutely. Cause you just, you just get it. You get it so well. And so we're here, we're huge astrology fans. And I'm curious as an astrologer, as someone that's been, you know, in this for so many years, what, what aspect of astrology do you really love? Like as far as what you utilize it for you, do you like it when you look at the kind of broad strokes collective energy of stuff? Do you prefer it when we get more personal? What's your like favorite way to use astrology? Well, I think you may know, I also have a master's degree in clinical psychology. So I have a very, I lean into the psychological part of astrology and particularly around helping people fall in love with themselves. That's my job is to, and I marry people. I mean, I marry at weddings, officially, but I like to marry people as in giving them back to themselves in a way where they really honestly fall in love with themselves. So I am a classically trained astrologer in that I use the classical system of the 12 signs of 10 planets and I talk astrology. I'm different in that I really want people to speak it from English and not from jargon because there's like Mercury's gone retrograde and we have Saturn return and we've got Neptune going up. Like, what does all that mean? So I bring everything down to English. That's my specialty. I think that's where my and then where I really get excited is I have a school that twice a year in January and September, and these people come into the classroom and like you, they, they have a fascination, but they don't really know a lot about it, but they can kind of tickle themselves. And then at the end of the six weeks, their whole lives have changed. They got lost 10 pounds. They finally fell in love with their husband. They got divorced. They finally made the decision about what they want to do in their career. And that's what makes me crazy. And I get these love letters and I get thank you notes. Like even their husbands write me and say their energy's back they're back to life. And all I did was just tell them about their chart and give them simple one class at a time lessons, but you can't believe what happens. Yeah, it really, it's amazing. And what, you know, I, I have watched, Deborah has also amazing videos on her YouTube that kind of break down in a really like succinct way, the different planets and kind of how they affect every Earth. other day. Yeah. Out of the, out of all of the, the the different planets and houses, what do you think is like one of the most profound like aha makers for someone? You named it on your on your Instagram. My Instagram is Deborah Silverman Astrology. Your Instagram talks about the moon. That is the single planet. The reason why is one, we're in love with the moon. They said there's more poetry written to the moon than any other object on earth because we are in love with that thing. But two, it rules the water and we are 90% water and our emotionally, you know, most of us as women certainly know our moon cycles. So the moon has such an influence on our moodiness on our vulnerability on our anger on our, so if that's the centerpiece of being human is the emotional body. Wouldn't that be a surprise that the planet that rules the water or the emotions or our tears would have such a predominant influence on us? Of course, of course. And and you actually mentioned in your um, in your moon video, you talk about how getting to know our moon and being able to express. I was I was blown away because I knew the moon was our emotional life, right? I knew that in the super basic, you know, understanding of astrology. But the way you explained it also of us not really being able to communicate our feelings and understand our feelings, how actually not having, and I, maybe correct me if I'm butchering the wording of this, but not necessarily having a healthy relationship with our moon is also what can lead to some <laughs> physical. So doesn't it sound so funny? You have a healthy <laughs> relationship with your moon? My what? 
you know, the part of you that lives upside in the sky, outside at night. About? Forget it. But you're so, right. So if somebody looks at their, so if somebody, let's say just a, a general Google search of what their moon sign is, right? I'm a Capricorn moon. What, how can they utilize that to, to help them emotionally? So if you know, for example, your moons in Capricorn, let's start at the beginning. I have a book that I've written called The Missing Element. And in the book, it breaks everything down to the four elements. It's kind of simple. It's the, before you, like astrology is as big as the sky. It goes on in every direction and it's giant, but there's a simple way to make it practical and you've nailed it. Moon and Capricorn, of course you did. You get, cause you're so practical. So yours is an earth. So your emotional body, when it gets upset, you're like, okay, we've got to get reasonable. We got to get a result. I'm not talking about this anymore. Just get over this. Like your, your emotional body, your moon is Capricorn. It's earthy, bound by practicality and not going to get indulgent. My moon's in fire. So I get super excited. I'm super, you can see my enthusiasm. I'm like so excited. I can't control myself. And I go and people say to me, how do you have so much energy? My moon's in fire. My emotional body gets so excited over going to Long's drugs. Like I look at the drugstore. I'm like, wow, look at all these. Like, why are we getting excited, Deborah? This is stupid. So if you have moon in air, if you have moon in the air sign, all you want to do is talk. I was just talking to one of my favorite people. He has moon in Gemini. And he always says it. He says, I hate my moon in Gemini because now I got to tell you every detail. So his emotional body has to talk and has to talk. And, and then at the end of the call, I say to him, you forgot to ask me how I am. But he had to report all the, he had to report every thought he was having. And I actually quite like it because it matches me. And then moon it's actually my, my fiance is a moon in Gemini. And it's so funny because that's him to a T. I often joke around with him that he like narrates the movie of our life because he'll be like oh you look so beautiful oh I just want to hug you like he said like where I won't say those things you know I'll just like hug him if I want to hug him he has to be like oh like I love you so much right? like he has to narrate it as he does it it's so it's adorable it's so cute and it makes you so happy <laughs> so, so here's the deal if someone's like you know your fiance has moon in the air and he wants to talk this is very valuable information because if you say to him would you be quiet shut them down. If I say to you, stop being so practical. Why can't you let me feel my feelings? You're like, excuse me, we had 15 minutes. Why are we still doing this? And so I understand water. People need to feel their feelings, indulge, not talk, sneak out in the back room and cry water. Air people need to talk mm -hmm. their heads off. Earth people need to get practical like you, like, come on. And fire people get super excited <laughs> over nothing. That, that it is. It gives you like a key to people's love languages in a way, right? 100%. And how to honor someone. And the water sign was so interesting because my mom and my grandma were both Scorpio moons. And I know that they're so cute. I look up everybody's chart. <laughs> I how I engage that. with people. <laughs> but it, it was so eye opening to hear um, you talk about how water signs, which I didn't understand because I'm a Pisces sun. So I thought water signs like were emotional, but or like, but forwardly emotional, but actually having the moon is more quiet, which makes sense. Because knowing like, especially my grandma, like I would have never known that she had that emotional life. She was so yeah. Capricorn I, sun. And that's what I, I saw. That. I love that you're talking about your grandma. Why does that make me so happy? Because I want to be a grandma. I want to be a grandma. I'm a wannabe. I have kids <laughs> enough to have kids, but they won't have kids. It's pissing me off. <laughs> Anyways, because I had a great relationship with my grandmas. So that's the answer to your question is yes. You know your grandma has Capricorn or she has Earth or she's Scorpio. Listen, you guys, the short answer is if you want to learn astrology, which everyone should learn, yes, you can come to our school twice a year. We have a wait list. It only opens in September and in January. But guess what? We have a new program called Continual Stars. It's an, like a continual ed program where you can take one class at a time. Here comes a truck. I hate when that truck comes by. <laughs> can you hear it? No, not at all. It's fine. Okay, perfect. Okay, so if you go, if anyone listening to this during the month of May, to go to, and you can do this too, Cassandra, meettheplanets.com. You just go to that website. It's a landing page and you sign up for free. And we'll tell you about these bite-sized classes. Because for example, 
We all want to learn about the moon. I mean, that one small detail, you don't have to study the whole thing, but that one small detail gives you so much information about your mom or your grandma or your kid or your fiance. And then suddenly you're speaking their language. Yeah. And, you, and then it's like, stop trying to change everybody. Women, women love to change men. Honey, I don't like your clothes. I don't like the way you're brushing your teeth. And by the way, you need some new job because this isn't work. Like, oh, honey, we didn't ask you. But women yeah. are all always giving. <laughs> They're always giving advice. So if you learn astrology, you go, uh-oh, he doesn't want to change his clothes. He's got moon and Taurus and he just wants to wear the same thing over and over again. That's your understanding of his nature and you don't impose yours on his and magic. And also, I think it helps you accept yourself, right? Oh, it helps you accept yes. yourself more to be like, there's nothing wrong with me, right? Like where there may have been partners in the past. And even my fiance, he'll joke about it, that he's the touchy feely one. And he's the emoter. And he's the one that like, you know, I, what I try to do is now I write cards. Like that's how I do. I write cards and then at special occasions that like I get mushier in. But I don't have like, I don't, that's not I'm how I record. Yeah. And so it's like when, when you're able to see that and be like, oh, like I'm divinely designed this way, right? I was designed to be this way and that's okay. And I don't have to, you know, obviously you negotiate whatever you need to negotiate with your partner, but you don't have to try to change yourself to be a different way. Do you know, NDRE, you must know NDRE, yeah. she just taken our school and she's now endorsing our whole program. And she just, that whole conversation is hers. Like God made me the way I am. I love every freckle on my face. I'm not the normal girl in the video. Leave me alone. So that her message, which is so hooked up to astrology because she's in love with astrology is exactly what you just said. Like you can't change, but you can become aware and then you can alter the low level and go to the high level. So for you, you're not going to be mushy, but I love it. But I decided I'd write cards. There's someone who kept her. I decided I'd write cards and I'll make buy a really nice card and write it. And that should be it. And his little moon and, you know, his moon and his, I would say his warm fuzzy self is like, honey, is that it? And you're like, that's the best I could do. But I took care of it. Practical as being that I am. And then he understands you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so you also talk about the progressed moon, which is different than this right so what is a progress moon because you're the first person i've ever heard to talk about this and how did you hear about it this is through my girl so my girlfriend took a progress moon class and then i think i saw something on youtube about it and she um she was looking up her progress moon i actually don't know what my progress moon is right now i don't know if you have it there but um she was like looking up all this stuff and was telling me about it. So I'm curious. I don't think I'll, do like anybody. I do have it. So <laughs> I'm going to give you a heads up. In five months, we're in April, May, June, July, August, September, your world shifts and it goes into a much slower pace. So you need to know that you're in a transition in the last few months. It's, your energy has been picking up a lot more than even more than it has because your progressed moons in Aries. So you've had two years of feeling super strong and super independent and ready to go, but it's going to slow down in five months. Announcement, you're going to call me back and go, can we do another podcast? Because when you know that, that it's mm. slowing down and you want to ground and play house and go get to work and be, this right now is like, you've got chi and especially the last few months, you're like, yeah. we got to do something with all this energy. Yeah. No, that I'm, so I'm actually supposed to be getting married in September. Oh, and that's how it goes. Every time the progress moon changes, everything changes. And you nailed it. See, you didn't have to even know when you knew. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's pretty wild because there's also been a really big recently, and I don't know if you can see this in my chart, but um, then we'll talk about progress moon in general. But recently during this, the last stage of this, whatever moon I'm in right now in the Aries moon, uh, in my Aries moon, I've shifted so much and I've gotten so much clearer on like what I want to do and what lights me up and my ambitions. And I do have a lot of energy right now where I'm like, go, 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 go. Like I'm writing a book. I'm like diving into this like new kind of career front that I've been exploring now and all of this stuff. Um, and so does that mean that like come September, that's going to stop where I'm just kind of going to have settled into my new place? You will have settled into your new place. So this is, you've got to harness this next five months because you're full of chi. It's going to slow down. You mark my words and nothing's wrong. The progress move goes into Taurus and then it slows down. So if you guys are interested, for example, we're going to do a whole class on in, you know, meet the planets is how you get onto the platform or 
continualstars.com. And we'll have one class on just progress moon. So it's the answer to the progress moon is it's a window of time. It lasts for two and a half years that you can determine what the rhythm is. Like you've been exter- the last five months, you've come out, you were much more spiritual. Now all of a sudden you're like, I want to be outside. I want to be physical. I want to, and then it's going to slow down. And so it's just noticeable. And we have certified astrologers on my website, Deborah Silverman astrology.com and work with me. And there's, I want to say there's a dozen astrologers who I've trained rigorously. Like they're not, they're really excellent. And they'll look at your progress moon and tell you when the cycles are that shift. Yeah. And so it really just allows you to kind of embrace that energy and also know when that energy is going to shift. So you can kind of lean into it to be like, okay, I've been in more of an active phase. I'm going into more of like a homey slow down phase. Yeah. Like when, me- it's such a funny story. When my progress moon that was about three years ago, went into cancer. I live in Hawaii and I was driving. I've never done this before. It was a month in, it was one degree. I was driving to a furniture store. And then I was, and I, and I read my observer came on. I was like, when do you go to a, like cancers love to play house. They love to dress up their house. And then all of a sudden I've started dressing up my house. Then fast forward two and a half years went by. My progress moon went into Leo. And now look at my hair. Now I've start, I found out about dry bar. I never even knew what it was. And they were blow drying my hair. And I was and now I'm like constantly thinking about my hair. That's amazing. Uh. It's embarrassing that I'm so, um, I, it's not conscious. I didn't suddenly go, I'm going to go get blow dries. I didn't even know that existed. And now suddenly like I'm going home and this is what we're doing. I can't even believe it. But I love it. I love, that's one of the things I love about astrology is that it just, it just kind of confirms what already is naturally evolving and what you're kind of leaning into and what's happening. And even like, like just so it just happened that September when my thing shifts is also my wedding and how you know, I didn't even know that when I planned my wedding. I was like, exactly. oh, great, I'm going to be moving that's into my that. next. <laughs> right. Isn't that crazy? You did it in September, right when the shift happens. And that's what you learn. That's like Saturn return. Like when you go through 28 to 30, any of you that are in that cycle, you don't have to figure it out. It's, I always say, you don't have to believe in astrology. It believes in you. It's taking <laughs> care of you. It loves you. Your soul's watching you. If you would just get coordinated Think about the power. It happens to me every day. When India re endorsed our work, which just happened recently in the last 10 minutes, I was like, wow, dreams really do come true. And all you have to do is become conscious of the cycles, follow the rhythms. They're happening anyway. So you don't have to believe in yeah. astrology. But when you're in sync with it, it's like having somebody, you know what it's like? You're going to laugh. I have an electric bike. That's all I ride is an electric bike. But it's like I have this little, there's a little throttle on it. It's like I'm riding the bike and then all of a sudden, whoo! And that's what astrology is like. <laughs> it's the throttle on your bike. I never said that before. <laughs> I love it. But it's true. It's, yeah, it's already happening. And so the more you're aware of it, then the more I, I sometimes compare astrology to the, what, the weather when I talk about the moons and stuff is saying it's like the weather. So it's going to rain regardless. But if you know it's going to rain, then you can make yourself some nice soup. You can watch a great movie on Netflix. You can enjoy the rain or do whatever you like to do in the rain. You want to go out and play in the rain, play in the rain, right? And it's like you can plan for it and it doesn't kind of like hit you off. Um, And that's what, yeah, those videos have gotten super popular. One's on Instagram and they're on all the different yoga girl. I don't know if you know who yoga girl is. She produces the videos for me and sends them out to her list because all they are is where's, it's a weather report. Where's the moon over the next two days? Like today, just so you know, just a few hours ago, it entered fire. And look at us. We're like super we're like, <laughs> we got so much energy. <laughs> and you can feel it like, oh my God. And, I, and sometimes when it's a full moon and you're suddenly going, why am I so edgy? Why can't I sleep? It helps. Absolutely. Just to know, have that peace. Now I have a question. What if there is something in your astrology chart that you don't necessarily resonate with? What do you think that you're going to say? That's funny. I thought you were going to say, what if there's something in your chart you don't really like? Well, I have this 1-800 number <laughs> called, my chart, but they never answer. So don't help. I can't help you there. Wait, what was the real question? What is you know, so it, Let's say, so I've gotten, you know, various astrology readings over the years and, you know, obviously they're coming through the vector, different channels of humans too. But sometimes when I, I've gotten readings where I'm like, huh. Like, for instance, my um, Midhaven, right? My Midhaven in Capricorn, right? Midhaven. Heaven. Heaven. Midhaven, sorry. 
My Midheaven in Capricorn. We talk, first of all, I want to talk about Midheaven because I feel like not a lot of people do. And that's essentially like your career, right? And, and what you're meant to do here. And that's something I've always felt confused by because Capricorn. Confused. You are so, look at you. You've got a, a hundred thousand people. Following. What are you talking about? What's the confusing part? Well, because I feel like Capricorn is a little bit more like, this is an, a little bit more boring, a little bit more business, a little not bit when more. It's, not when it's spiced with Pisces. That's the perfect uh -huh. spice. It's like saying you had eggs with no salt on them. It only is boring without the spice. Pisces is spicy. So this is the thing about astrology. You are definitely Capricorn in the Midheaven. You're professional. <laughs> you have high standards. You just told me how I got accepted into this. You guys, you can't believe what I got I had to do to get on her podcast. It wasn't easy. Just kidding. <laughs> She's super picky. She's super picky. It's Capricorn, only the best. She's not playing with them. She's not inspired. She's hanging up on you. Yeah, it's true. It's true. We don't, I don't accept guests on the, I mean, I select all the guests on the podcast. I people that I'm really inspired by and, and I'm feel excited to have a conversation with. I don't need to just, you know, that's Capricorn. That's not boring. That's your standards are so high. That's Capricorn. Mm, mm. Well, how did Capricorn get put in the back room as being boring? And by the way, Pisces are not all spaced out. We can't do generalizations with astrology. That's pissing me off. Yeah. You study totally. it. Capricorn is not boring. I'm coming back in my next life is Capricorn rising. Yes, I am. They're not boring. They're just very, your style and your, so let's talk about this. The mid heaven is your career. It's the very top of the, if you looked right now above your head, right above your head, that's the midheaven. Whatever was on the top of your mother's head at the moment of your birth is the midheaven. There goes that truck again, just goes by, nobody hears it but me and I have to always put the little mute button on. Okay, so the midheaven, the top of the chart, what would be called the zenith of the heavens. So let's say you were born at noon. The sun was right above your mom's head when you were born. Then you'd have the sun on the midheaven because that's what it is. It's the very top of the chart. So whatever sign is on the top of the chart describes your highest calling is what I call it, your ambition. And you have Capricorn. So that tells me about your career that Cassandra cannot do half anything. She's either going to do it all. She'll be professional. She'll have high quality or she won't do it. Mm. Okay. So then maybe, sound, so it's not, it's not boring. No, I think it was just more um, like about, I, th I think maybe I watched a more general video that was just talking about having earth in the midheaven and how sometimes you're like, these will be people that will end up with like, kind of like more boring or monotonous kind exactly. of jobs I, and know, stuff like that. Up. I want to call the astrology police right now. <laughs> Like, but this is why it's so. But it's so true. This is why it also it's so interesting to also be able to when you get your chart read and when you're looking at your own chart, it is about kind of meshing it all together, right? And having Capricorn in the Midhaven and different things in your Sun would shift things a lot, right? Definitely, definitely. So this is all to say why continual stars or meettheplanets.com is so important. You have to study with me because guess what? People are negative. I am always lifting things up because you and I, oh my God, we have the same life lesson. Saturn and Sagittarius, did you know you had that? No, what is it? I'm born, ready for this, 30 years after you were born. No, that's not right. What? I'm no. 30 years before you were born. I am 30 years younger than you. What? <laughs> I love that story. I love being old and nobody ever guesses it. I'm in my mid 60s. I'm headed to my mid 60s. Oh my goodness. What in your chart keeps you like forever Gemini, young? Gemini, what? Gemini, <laughs> Gemini. I'm just, I'm, a, I'm just a kid in disguise. Okay, so back to you and I sharing the same life lesson. Saturn is the most important planet in astrology. You asked about the moon. The moon describes your emotional inner world. And yes, that's your human self. But I'm, as an astrologer, our school only focuses on what did you come to do? What is your purpose? How do I help you fulfill it? I is love there it. Is there a more important question, Moon and Capricorn? No. No. <laughs> That's the upside of Capricorn. They're like goal oriented. I so, am. <laughs> I know you are. So if you're in my lesson is Saturn and Sag, what did we promise? Because Saturn tells you your promise. What did you promise to learn? You and I, ready? We promise to be blunt, honest, laugh in the face of crisis, and always see life as an adventure. How are you doing? Wow. 
I would blunt. say blunt, honest. blunt, honest. I'd say laugh in the face of crisis. I don't know if I've gotten that one yet, but I definitely see life as an adventure. My word for, you know, like some people pick like a word every year or whatever. My word for like the past gosh knows how many years is juicy. Like I'm like the goal of life is like juicy, That's which that, is like exactly. the adventures, like all the different, like touching all the different things, exploring all the different things. So yeah, that's that is the truth. Me too. So why? How did I stay young? Is my life is juicy? Like I'm on an electric bike every day. I'm doing yoga. I'm making sure I'm in the ocean. I'm making sure that I'm playing tennis. I'm like the person that says, "We are not not going to eat this life alive." That's Saturn and Sag. We're like, mm. yes, yes. I love that. Ah, it's what you came to. Isn't that a great life lesson? You that is a great life, life? lesson. We're lucky, yeah. it's the best, but it's not always so easy. So you guys want to go study. Here's three things we've given you. Where is your moon located? Go find out on my everyday Instagram. You'll find out where the moon is. And then find what is your life lesson? We talked about that. And what was the other one we talked about? I just Your progressive about. moon. Your progressed moon. Yes. You want to go find out where it is. And your mid your midheaven. Yes. Where is your midheaven and where is that directing? So <laughs> regardless of someone's mid heaven you could really have any career it would just it's kind of more the energy in which you do that career is that correct yes it doesn't matter listen all roads lead to heaven all roads lead to home doesn't matter what you do but the mid heaven gives you the clue like in your case capricorn see okay here's we are we and i are opposite so you're capricorn in the mid heaven you want the quality control you want only the best you're going to work till the cows come up you're a workaholic your ambition is really so high quality my mid heaven's cancer so everybody calls me mom i mean i must have 55 kids it's like getting out of hand i i become everybody's mom i don't even know cancer on the mid heaven i care so much about the kids all my life's work is you guys we have to prepare for the next generation. I keep telling everyone, no one's listening. I love Greta Thunberg. Is that her oh, name? Oh, yes. Because yeah. she, you know, she's saying, it, what, no one's listening, but my cancer on the midheaven, I was a healer for over 30 years. I was a professional therapist. And then one day I was like, if I hear one more of those stories. So I created a new project called Tell Me a Story. You guys, it's called TMAS. Like it's Christmas with a T. T-M-A-S dot <laughs> com. That's so funny. It's Christmas. I never said that before. It's Christmas with a T. And it's a class where you come and tell your story to clean out your own. Because I, I realized that my therapist, I felt I had this notion that in Africa, they tell, sell, tell you that if you have a gift and you don't use it, the gods will come to get you. So I was given the gift as a healer and I stopped using it. And so I was like, someone's going to come. <laughs> I created TMOS so you can in every month I do one class and there's a wait list but you can come do it where I help you unpack your story using astrology and the elements it's very simple you don't have to know anything and people's lives change and so is this about sharing like your your past and and kind of how you came to be through the lens of astrology yeah your personal it's less about astrology it's about your past you got that Mm -hmm. And it's about the four elements. Because that book that I wrote, The Missing Element, do you have the book? No, I don't actually. I don't have the book. I have to get it. <laughs> well, it's um, you can get it on Amazon or I can mail it to you. That's the other thing. And um, you can get it on my website and I will mail it to you with your chart in it. So if any of you don't have your chart, you can go on my website, buy the mm. book. I will stick your chart in the book and sign it for you. But, um, but the book is all about the four elements and which one you're missing and how to grow the missing one. It's a very wow. simple, yeah, it's really powerful. Can you give us like a spark notes on how you figure out what you're missing? You take a test. There's a test in the book and it takes about two minutes to take. And that shows you your missing element. And then you go read the chapter of your missing element. It's, it's a very, it's really, I'm, a, I'm very proud of that book. It's, I wrote it years ago, but it, it keeps on giving and people really see the benefit. And anyways, so there's a whole bunch of things you can do. You can do, tell me a story. If you're a writer, or you're journaling and you really want transformation. That's the biggest single way to get transformation. You can take my school in September or January for six weeks and learn to be an astrologer and change your career. By the, by the second level, you can be an astrologer. Or you can go to continual stars and just take little bite-sized bit classes or like, 300 or 500 and they're only in a one month once a week and you learn enough astrology to get addicted i feel like a drug dealer (laughs) 
It is very addicting because then you keep on wanting to uncover more and more and more. But it's always so true. Like, look at your progress when you're getting married in September, right? When your progress moon changes, you can't make this shit up. Right. And now can you tell on um, an astrology chart, can you start, can you tell when are more ideal times for having a kid or can you tell? Yes, you can. (laughs) Definitely can. Yeah. yeah. You have to study that. You've got to sit down with the chart and that would be really valuable. There's some astrologers on our team and you can write to me. That's the other thing I do. I match make. You say, you write to me at Silverman support and you say, at Silverman support Gmail and you say, I want a reading. And then I look at your chart and I fix you up and I do this thing. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make <laughs> me a catch. Find me a find, catch me a catch. And I fix you up. Very cool. So your school focuses a lot on what's your purpose? What are you here to do? Are there any, we touched on Saturn, we touched on Midheaven, we touched on the moon. Are there any other big elements? How does your rising or your, your rising or your Jupiter play a part in that? So the rising is what you're rising toward. It's your higher self. It's think about it. It's called the ascendant. Yeah. And that's what you're, so you want to really focus on that. Yours is Aries. So you want to, you know, you're very excitable as you probably know. Yes. <laughs> and you must have a lot of energy. Yeah, I, I kind of and oscillate. Pisces, yeah. Pisces don't have a lot of energy, but your Aries does. It goes both ways. Yeah. When I, when I'm on, I'm like really on when I'm excited, I can like, da, 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 da. but then there is that part of me that I think the Pisces in me that loves to like nap and just meditate and like relax a lot. <laughs> Mac, that's so Pisces. Nap, meditate, and relax. I wish I had that one. I don't have that one. I wish I had less of it sometimes. <laughs> great, but you can't do a trade, but you can learn. And so, yes, the midheaven, the ascendant, two very important markers, the ascent, the midheaven, the career, the ascendant, your soul. And the last thing I would say, and this is a really good interview, by the way. It's no surprise you're good at this, Capricorn Midheaven. <laughs> the last one, I've never done this before. The last one is the North Node. And we really go into depth with that in the class in level one. And, uh, and the shortcut to enlightenment is our nickname for it. It's the, but it's, it's as a beginner, you want to know a little bit more about astrology to delve into that. You can simply, listen, if you're interested in beginner astrology, beep, beep, beep. The first mm-hmm. thing you should do, the first thing you should do is go to continual stars and just take an entrance level class. See if it's got your attention. Then sign up for the wait list for level one. Then there is a course called Progress Moon that we sell. Obviously your friend took it. Yeah. And we sell it on YouTube. But you guys, you just go to my website. (laughs) I'm like an advertisement for myself. That's kind of funny. (laughs) So tell us a little bit more about the North Node because I feel like not as many people know about that one. It's not as flashy out there. (laughs) do Do you know where yours is? I actually don't know offhand. I thought it was in Aries, but then that, that doesn't make sense, right? If that's also my sense. No, that's true. You got the right answer. Oh. Yeah, true. So, so it is, it is, here's why it's called the shortcut to enlightenment, the North Node. This is super cool. The North Node is where you're going this lifetime in the name of the future to evolve. The South Node, which is always in the opposite sign, is what you did in the past life, where you got stuck in comfort because you really did that well. So your south node's in Libra. So you know how to do relationship this lifetime. It's comfortable for you to partner, but you promised with north node and Aries rising that you would be independent. How are you? Good, good. Um, I'm very, very independent. And it was interesting because almost every astrologer I've seen always told me when I was younger, I'd always ask, am I going to get married or whatever? And they always told me, it'll be your choice. You don't have to. And, (laughs) and that was really, really interesting, but I do, I definitely had that in a more genuine, in a genuine way. I had a very much like, I like my life. I'm good with my life and a lot of like independence and self-sufficiency. And it's really interesting. Um, my partner is a Libra. So like I said, it's like, it's like kind of, I'm this like independent woman and it actually works really well for our dynamic. I think, I think he, obviously he has to love that part of me because it's so who I am. Um, But yeah, no, it's definitely, and that was, I went through a lot of, um, when we first moved in together, he was the first person I ever even lived with because I was like, 
I'm not going to, you know, I'm not living with anyone unless it's really serious or whatnot. Very much like my own space and all that. And even, even now, like I go on vacations by myself. I like having space. I have my own like little office. There are times when I like the door is closed and he knows that like I'm in my space, you know, um, oh, yeah. and he just, he gets it. But yeah, so I think I'm doing, I'm think I'm doing good with that. It is interesting how um, it's also, yeah, it's like the, I have some of my girlfriends where we'll exchange, like my confidence level is so strong around relationships. I end up coaching a lot of people around relationships and stuff. I feel like easy on that. And then it's almost like the other like independence or even like the like career stuff and things. That's where like I get my head caught up a little bit more, less on relationships because your moon's in Capricorn. Your Capricorn's in the mid heaven. You got Venus in Capricorn. You're a work bee. And lucky me for being on your, your interview today. This is so wonderful. And thank you for including me in your podcast. And you guys, astrology is waiting for you. It's going to make so much sense. And I speak English and all my teachers speak English. I've got a company with 50 women. And yeah. they're all astrologers. And you can you know learn astrology and change your career. Yeah. It's really, and even if you don't want to become an astrologer, it's you so just want to learn about yourself. Yes. Yeah, and I think it can help your your career no matter what it is, right? To be able I to look hire at these all different... those women. Every single woman that I've hired, I look at her chart. Absolutely, right? Absolutely, to see like where are they get where are their strengths going to be. Um, one other question is there any place in the chart that you find like that more of like the topic so if the midheaven is how someone does that does career right or does their career or shows up in their career is there a place in your chart that shows more of the specific like topic like oh i feel like this person's going to work in the in like wellness or this person's going to work in money or this person's going to work in whatever <laughs> Totally. You're asking great questions, but I can't answer that right now. It's too deep. The short answer is yes. Astrology's whole function is to give you your purpose and help you figure out how to fulfill your agreement you made here. Because you don't come down here. They don't take anything but volunteers to get here. Nobody pushed you on the bus. You came on to incarnate in earth. It was a volunteer position. And now your job is to work the riddle backwards and figure out what did I sign up for again? Oh, it's him I'm supposed to marry. Thank you. Now it's becoming so clear. Oh, I'm supposed to have a baby. I'm not supposed to have a baby. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you so much. It's all becoming clear now. And astrology helps. Absolutely. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Deborah. This was lovely. Is there any parting final words or thoughts you want to share? Guys, oh God, meet the planets. I'm going to tell you the dates. This is what we're doing. Meet the planets is June 2nd, 9th, 16th, and 23rd. It's four Wednesdays in June. It's a one hour class and I'm teaching it. It's the first time in years I've taught one hour on the planets and they're really, you get to meet them. It's the beginning introduction. If you're a beginner or you're advanced, meettheplanets.com is where you're going to fall in love with these beings that are mythical and they have a legacy that's lasted across all time. 5,000 years old is astrology. Why not get to know them and get yourself supported and tell me a story. Christmas T M Moss is a great way to fall in love with your, your sad story. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, has, everyone has a sad story sitting in the background that needs to get healed. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. Everyone check that out. And uh, yeah. And I'm sending you the missing element. I want you to send me your address, Cassandra. I'm sending you the missing element, the book. Yes. I can't wait. And I think that's also a great place for people to start as well. I'm excited to get that book. I will definitely yes. give you my address. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. It was so fun. <laughs>